So uh, to continue um, the linear regression, uh, again I um, I'll describe this data again. We have uh, 459 subjects. We have their weight change. We have their uh, uh, exercise that they did, the diet modification that, uh, that they did, as well as their gender. So the question here, can we predict the weight change from the, the number of exercise and the diet and the gender? Now, as you can see here, that the gender is not continuous. It is uh, categorical here. But the most important thing, uh, actually, uh, is to have something called dummy. Dummy basically is 0 and 1. So we have the female here as 2. So we have to uh, change that. If we go to transform, um, record into same variable, and the variable is gender, and what is the old and what is the new? Uh, the old one is 2, and the new one wanted 0. So continue. Okay. So we go for gender here. We'll tell him that zero is female. So we have zero and one. Now to do, um, and I didn't discuss the, 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 the sample size. As you increase the independent variable, you, have a very, you should have a very good sample here. So a rough number is, is, is at least you have from 15 to 20 uh, uh, subjects per variable. So for three here, we have a, at least minimum of almost 50. We have 459. That's for the sample size. So uh, we already examined the normality of this data. So we'll go to analyze regression linear. Now, I have to tell you two things here. One is mode of entry. So we have uh, different mode of entry how to build the data or the formula itself. One very important one is hierarchical which means that you have theory that one of the independent variable is correlating very well with your outcome or you have a study showed that. So we have let us say that we have a study that diet change is explaining the weight. However, we don't know about the gender and the exercise. So we'll tell the SPSS to build a model about the, the diet first, then to add the gender and the exercise. And we'll see whether the, your, your formula had increased or improved or not. Uh, statistics will uh, look for the model fit, descriptive, and the estimate of the regression coefficient. And Collinearity diagnostic also. For the plot, we have the prediction versus the residual. Histogram and normality plot uh, should be picked. And you look for Mahalanobis distance here. When you hit OK, this is what you will get again. First of all, you will ha have that descriptive statistics with their standard deviation, correlation, whether it is significant or not, seems to be all of them they are significant, and there is some correlation between the weight change, diet change, sex, and exercise. Now here, you will tell you variable entered or removed. 
so f the first model we told him that to put the dice always then the next model he will add the six and the exercise he didn't remove ev everything so in the first model you have the the, the diet change in the second one model you have six exercise and diet change now this is the summary of the model that you have so the first model which having only the diet change as a predictor for the weight change you have co correlation coefficient of 0.29 which is almost mild to moderate and it explain eight percent so the diet change explain eight percent of the weight change in the population it is almost again eight percent when we added the sex and the exercise it it improved actually so the correlation coefficient increased to moderate one and it explained 11 percent of the variability and in the population it explains a percent of the variability of weight change now is it significant or not so the first model is significant so we know that the diet change has a significant predictor of the outcome of the weight change in the second model when all of them there again it is positive so it is significant with this one our theory here that at least one of them is uh, significant to know that we have to go to the coefficient table itself so the diet change uh, was significant for the last formula we will find that the diet change again is still significant the six is significant or the gender while the exercise again is not significant now we know that the beta here that every unit increase in the diet change how much it will predict the change in the weight change uh, in the weight which is 0 0.04 for the sex it predicts up to 0.6 so the gender here is very very strong with this one however when we uh, make them standardized and just uh, explained by the standard deviation seem to be that the diet change is having them the most important magnitude of the effect now the this table here which is excluded variable will tell you that with the second model when he try to remove the sex it is significant that means it is bad idea to remove the sex while the exercise is less significant so he can remove the exercise um, for the for the normality of the uh, formula here seem to be that's normal for the histogram for the pp plot also it is normal and for the scatter plot here most of the data is around the zero i think we uh, skipped the tolerance tolerance examining here um, the multicollinearity between the independent variable we don't want value above 10 for the tolerance or below 0 0.01 uh, sorry we need value above 0 0.01 for the tolerance and less than 10 for the VIF uh, so it seems to be that we are okay here and uh, there is no uh, significant multicollinearity between your independent variable um, uh, this could conclude the uh, regression the linear regression at least and uh, from the next clip we are going to discuss the logistic regression where is your outcome is actually document uh, dichotomous that mean you have just two uh, 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 value whether it is zero and one yes no this is or not and so forth um, hopefully you have uh, learned something today and uh, looking forward to meet with you with the next video clip